Welcome to part 3 out of 5 short video tutorials on how to get started with Perceptor Labs. From the previous parts, you learned how to install and set up Perceptor Labs. I also got a good idea of the UI. I also quickly showed how to build a model using one of our templates. But now it's time to build a model from scratch. We'll be building a more complex model, a generative adversarial network, or GAN for short. Since Percept Labs is a graphical user interface for TensorFlow, you can create any kind of model in it. Today, we will create that GAN I mentioned earlier. Now, we already have a template for GAN, which will produce the same result as the one I'm going to create. However, I'll create mine from scratch instead. A GAN consists of two main parts, a generator and a discriminator. The generator part generates samples, in this case images, and then the discriminator part takes these images and tries to tell if they are fake or real. For that to work though, we need to feed the discriminator with some kind of data set of real images as well. In our case, we will use the MNIST data set, which is handwritten digits. For the generator part, we need to start off with some kind of random data for it to generate images from. To do that, we use a random component. And we set the output of that random component to 100. This will feed the generator with 100 random digits, which it can use as the base. After that, we will create a fairly small deep neural network consisting of only two dense components. The first dense component has 128 neurons and the second one we set to 784 neurons. This is the output size of the real data set as well, which is why we use it here. To make it a little bit more interesting, we'll also reshape this into images, just to make it look more fun. And that's the generator part. Fairly simple, right? After this, we just need to load the real data as well, so we can start comparing the two of them. To load the real data, we drag out the local component and select our data set. Then we take a reshape component to make sure it also gets transformed into an image. And then we need some kind of way to compare these two. To do this, we use a switch component, which will switch back and forth between the two outputs. So the output or switch component is now going to go between the input one and input two and back and forth. Now it's time to build a discriminator. The discriminator is a fairly small network as well, also consisting of two dense components. The first one is just like before, 128 neurons. And the second one is just a very simple output component with only one neuron inside it and no activation function. This component is the one which is going to say if the image is real or not, when it's properly trained. It's going to be a 1 if it's real and a 0 if it's fake. Finally, I'll add a training component to wrap everything up. I'll use a GAN training component, and the only thing we need to set in here is the switch and the real data. The switch is already correct, so we change the real data to the local one component. After this, I'll also change the epochs to 2. Just so the training goes a little bit quicker. And then I'll set the batch size to 100. The next step will be to run and train our model. This we can do now already, but we'll go through the details in the next tutorial.
Hey, I hope you had fun creating your very first model in Presetti Labs. Now it's time to train and test that model. Watch part 4 to learn how to do that easily with Presetti Labs. As usual, if you run into any issues or any feedback, please visit our forum at forum.presetlabs.com or reach out to me directly at our Slack channel.